Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have with me my parents, Daniel and Lata. They are today going to do a video answering your questions on parenting. So on my Instagram and my Facebook, I asked you guys to post your questions on parenting and uh, I have all the questions here. And today you guys will be answering all of them sure. one by one. So the first question is, how do you strike a balance between being a modern parent yet imparting traditional values? You need to first understand what do you mean by modern. So when you're talking about it being modern, is it letting them do whatever they want to do uh, or directing them to what they need to become? What is your definition of Traditional values, maybe you can start with that. Traditional or ancient values that have been very significant part of human society and civilizations. And uh, in contrast, when we say modern, being a modern person could be in the realm of uh, the modern values, or it could be even modern as somebody who was adapted to the new environments that are evolving. And I don't see really a conflict unless there is a conflict with the values. We obviously all have to change to evolving circumstances. And human beings have adaptiveness and so we generally adapt in order to make ourselves fitted into new environments. If the ancient values that have been central for human society and its development and its sanity, its order, if they are conflicted with, we need to really think as to whether that is modern. It need not necessarily be even fitting into the category of being modern because they are timeless and therefore there is really no serious conflict that one could face in retaining them because we need to adopt them into our lives. It's like almost, uh, do we really lose essential organs of our body just because we became into a new environment? The heart is there, the lungs are there, the brain is there. And these are so central to human well-being that they need to be there. So that's really my take on uh, the modern man. The modern man has to continue to retain what was so central and essential for him then and what is central and essential for him now. So moving on to the next question, what are those central and essential values that you would want to Give to your children, which you passed on to me and Jethro. If you were to ask me, whatever that makes you more human, love, humility, kindness, gentleness, care, and commitment. Art, work. These are the ones that are so permanent. And so these values, obviously, again, if I as a father fail to introduce, stopping with just providing you food, clothing, shelter, and I'm a colossal failure as a human being, as a father, because as a human, I need to first pass on humans into the child. It's a very central responsibility. It's almost like asphyxiation, denying oxygen for the child. So these are all qualities that you need to really give because that is how a child will truly survive and be able to adapt and fit itself and become relevant and be contributing. So those are qualities that one shouldn't really forget right from the child's birth. Very often we think about 
and spend a lot of time to think about what kind of clothing we want to keep because those are very basic. It doesn't require so much of our intelligence and our time that we have to plan and think about it for once on end. There are people possibly who spend years on it to keep thinking about what clothes to give and so on and so forth. But the point is our life needs, naturally needs to be even getting ready to be an adequate father or an adequate mother. And were there any practical ways if you could give some examples of how you inculcated those values in us? Yeah, as we said about that uh, the inculcating all this uh, integrity. A lot of it goes on how you are as a parent. Are you, uh, because for me, integral as we were talking about the value system is uh, love for God and love for man. So these are very, very integral. So if you, if you love uh, people, then you will be gentle with them, you'll be kind to them, you'll, be, you'll respect them, you'll give them dignity. All these things get encompassed in that particular word saying that love other person. And so that is what our, as a parent, if you are not doing it, then you cannot expect your child to do it. Definitely not. Because the child, even as they try to, uh, from their infancy when they are growing up, the, the person whom they see is you. So if you share with them, that you want them to be truthful. You say don't lie, but if they see you lie, then it's not going to work. Yeah, I think that's very true and how I have personally also learned because I've seen even about lying, you used to say that we always say the truth. And there have been instances throughout the years where you, I've seen you take a stand where you've spoken the truth even when it came to even the house uh, that you purchased in Navi Mumbai when you had to sign a declaration saying that we don't have any other flat in the same society. You took a stand and that was maybe when I was 11, 10 or 11. So seeing that it made me understand that truth is the truth no matter what the consequences. The child is born into an environment and the child has been rendered with capacities to learn through its senses, sees, hears, feels, observes and so on. So I think the best and most effective way of educating a child with values is its continuous representation in its surroundings. So as a parent in order to nurture a child that is so essential because the child will struggle if there is a confusing message about a matter that you wish for the child to learn with clarity, if there is a misrepresentation. So that's really a concomitant responsibility of parents as well as a society. Society can't also become great unless that environment is a constant to cultivate the nobility in a child. As I said earlier, the humanness has to surface to become the defining characteristic of a growing child to last unto its adulthood. So how do you do it? Unless you fill the atmosphere with abounding examples with clear clarity, it's only then a child gets the correct messaging. Therefore, our responsibility is personal. It is also a community responsibility. So if you didn't have a chance for practical demonstration of truth in what you see, truth also could be vague to your mind. Which parent will want to give half a lesson? That is irresponsibility. Therefore, integral exhibition of what you really uphold in one's life is so necessary for effective education. So the next uh, question is, 
spare the rod and spoil the child. Do you believe in this statement? Yes, I do believe because now if a child goes and touches a fire, what do you do? Stop the child. You just stop the child. You might even hit the hand to make sure it goes fire. So there are certain times when you need to uh, bring some point into the child's understanding which may not happen if you want to try and explain because the other school of thought is to explain but uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we're not talking about abuse so we are just talking about correction with love that's very very important that you correct with love yeah as long as the message is properly balanced and maintained i don't think there's a case for extreme positions and obviously the rod can be administered without discretion and it doesn't mean rod 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 that's not the message but even given uh, human nature of human learning certain points of emphasis become necessary they are particularly to do with certain deeper issues or qualities of character because scope for correction is higher in the impressionable child so why would you neglect to use skillfully all possible options and the lead outcome is what we are concerned as i said earlier It's a matter of great importance. The child development is not a matter of uh, a very delegated priority. It's important. It's very central. And uh, omission can be missed opportunity. But then, when you say wrong. It doesn't necessarily have to be all the time literally the rock. In a way, it's about the firmness and the seriousness. So, are you able to get that message across? For example, even when you were growing, uh, when you were a toddler, and you would do something which is not correct, and I would uh, explain to you, and I would give a punishment. that would require you to go and sit in a corner uh, facing the wall and i would say go sit there and think about what you've done until you think and you, then you can come back and tell me that yes i have understood that what i did was wrong so i would make you do that and and it was not just once or twice i don't know whether you remember but then you have done it plenty of times but then i think those are the moments that Uh, which inculcates that type of uh, feeling in the child that yes something is wrong because that conscience is what we are talking about here so if something is wrong and it is uh, so the conscience needs to prick a child and for that certain times of course this is necessary there are obviously abuses but do we react and refrain from using a means that is so important for the upbringing of a child even in other society punishments are there in order to bring about a correction or a sense of fear of a consequence so the fear of a consequence is an important ingredient of improving human experience so even Do we see social restraint is necessary? Is what we all are hearing. But to exercise that restraint again, you need the lockdown. It isn't voluntary. And even if it is a lockdown, its message is very clear. Even there, we try to figure out a way to actually have our liberties at the cost of human society. So this is the trace in human society through what. human existence self correction if it were an ability of human being all the time then we don't 
possibly talk about a topic of this kind. But that's the reality. So instead of conjecturing something else that is appropriate for that reality, we might as well use it. But again, skillfully, not literally the same as a rod. The, the messages that we need to achieve, those points of correction, of direction for the child. And we rather achieve it as they grow and then try to straighten it. Even in cultivation, when we grow trees, trees sometimes tend to take different directions. A good farmer knows as to how to grow that particular tree and supports it. Doesn't give it the freedom to grow whichever way. That's when it becomes wild. So there are obviously chopping and other things that are done. So I believe it has its space. And it also I think matters what you are correcting because I don't think any time through my uh, childhood you uh, forced upon me like you should get 100%. Those were not the things you were correcting me on. You were correcting me on more character traits or if I was uh, showcasing any quality which was not appropriate. Those were the things you focused on. So I think that also is important because if you try to correct for everything and you discipline for everything then the child is not going to listen to you for anything. So it's definitely not rod, rod, rod. So it's actually a sign of weakness if a parent is using that to obtain effectiveness of improvement. So that's the weakness of a parent. That the parent would use a forceful method as that inappropriately for things that parent can use influence by modeling. So many instances you may not model but then you want to actually use the stick to force it upon a child. That's not going to be a healthy upbringing. So as you said, corresponding to the need. So we don't straight away when we go to a hospital, we don't straight away be wheeled into an operation theater. The operation theater indeed is there. It's actually a provision in any hospital, but that's not the immediate needs. So that's where it is the skill and the understanding is very essential if you want to have because finally it is not just about developing a child independent of developing also the parent-child relationship. So if you have to appear as a figure of terror upon a child, you lose the child. And what's all the development about? Because you already alienated the child. So it's an art, it is a skill which needs to be very carefully administered.